uh, the other thing I wanted to get to, uh, as I mentioned at the top of the show, is your interview with Doug Hamlin. You had this uh, law, you know, wide-ranging interview that he granted with you uh, over at uh, on Cam and Company over at Bearing Arms. People should absolutely go and listen to the whole thing. I think you, there was a you covered a, a number of topics and and were able to get him to give some some pretty decent detail on on a few things here as the new head of the, the NRA, the new CEO and executive vice president. Um, the first one to uh, be voted on by the board since Wayne LaPierre back in uh, the 90s, right? And so what, what can you just give us your top line takeaway from that interview? What was the biggest thing you think he said? I, well, first, I think the fact that he even did the interview is, mm -hmm. is worth acknowledging, you know, because since really even before 2019, I think you probably go back to 2017, 2018, Wayne LaPierre was rarely seen uh doing interviews you know he would show yeah. up for cpac and show up for the inter annual meeting but it, it he didn't really want to do a lot of sit-down interviews i think the last uh, which big I one think was Frank like 2012 right like the david gregory one where where david gregory broke uh dc law pulled out that 30 round magazine that's like yeah. the last big interview i remember wayne lapierre doing with any sort right of i mean by the time parkland in 2018 dana lash is the you know spokesperson for the nra um and was named the spokesperson i think because wayne didn't want to do those types of interviews so you know when cnn held its uh, uh meeting uh, town hall uh, i guess it was after parkland it was dana who was there it wasn't wayne hmm. um so i'll give doug hamlin credit for simply showing up and sitting down and doing this interview. It is nice to see the executive vice president of the NRA who's, you know, not afraid to sit down for an interview. And, you know, I guess you could argue this was going to be a friendly interview. Um, yeah. I wanted to be fair. I wanted to be tough. I, I have made it clear that I would like to see the NRA survive. I want to see the NRA strong. I think the Second Amendment community is better off with a strong NRA. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to, you know, parrot NRA talking points or uh, agree with everything that was said. And in fact, Doug and I actually got into it a little bit talking about the Hunter Biden case, because as you say, the verdict came down in the middle of our interview. Right. Um, and so I asked him, what's your take? And he said, well, you know, uh, we believe that the right to keep your arms is the right of law abiding citizens. I'm paraphrasing a bit here. And Hunter Biden broke the law. And uh, so I, I kind of pushed back a little bit. And, you know, we talked again about the fact that this law applies to all unlawful drug use, even marijuana that's been legalized medicinally or recreationally in particular states. I brought up um, a hypothetical example of a, a cancer patient uh, who might be going back on chemotherapy and would like to have a gummy to relieve her nausea. Um, coincidentally, my wife is getting ready to go back on chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is something that we've that she and I have talked about over the years. Yeah. So this is an issue that that matters to me. And I. I'll be honest, I thought that it was a wishy-washy response from Doug Hamlin. Um, but the nice thing, the thing that I did appreciate about it is after I kind of gave him that additional information, he said, well, you know what? I hadn't really thought about it from that perspective. Um, and I hope that he does think about it from that perspective. So He seemed open to the uh, idea you know, that maybe the law should be changed, uh, even if they, yeah, he wasn't coming out and, and uh, you know, saying they're putting together a campaign to change the law. Uh, right. So. At, at, but at least just willing to, OK, that was something I didn't think about. So let me think mm -hmm. about that. And you know, maybe we can talk about this in the future. Um, and maybe I, did, I, I I get the brush off and uh, nothing changes. But, you know, I, I think the most important thing, like I said, for me, was the fact that he was willing to have these conversations. And he knows that, you know, there's a great deal of skepticism out there, even after the reform slate. Uh, was elected, even after Doug Hamlin was elected. There are a lot of people who say, I'm not going to give the NRA any money uh, until every board member who backed Wayne LaPierre is gone. Or I'm not going to give the NRA any money until they say, you know, no more gun control laws. We're going to repeal the NFA. Um, you know, it's going to be a process to reform the board. As you know, just the, the, the structure of how these elections are held, only a third of the board is up for election every year. So, the next step, I think, for those folks who want to see this reform continue is to find a a larger slate of reform candidates. Right. This year it was four, maybe five. Uh, next year it should be 15 or 20 um, or 25. And, you know, th then you'll be able to make even bigger changes. But, I, you know, Doug Hamlin talked about some of the steps that have been taken. They've named a compliance officer. They've named an auditor. He made the point of saying these are positions that don't report to him. 
So it's not like the EVP can cover up what they say. Um, I think that Hamlin may have been a little constrained in what he could talk about because we do have the second civil trial coming up in New York next month. Yeah, speaking and, of which, they had, uh, the NRA had made it a request along with all the other defendants in the case to basically have the, the verdict put aside by the judge, uh, the jury's verdict, and that was denied. So they are going to go through with this second half of this trial. Okay. Yeah, I mean, unless they can reach some sort of settlement agreement beforehand, but right, uh, right now that doesn't, you know, we don't have any news of, of that happening. So yeah, yeah. there may have been some areas that Hamlin didn't really feel comfortable, you know, talking about, but I will say there were no preconditions for this conversation. Um, I reached out to uh, Nick Perrine at the NRA ILA um, right after you spoke with Doug Hamlin at the NRA board meeting, as a matter of fact, and in a uh, fit of jealousy, I was like, Hey Nick, I want to talk to uh, Doug too. And, uh, well, and so got, it was a few weeks before, longer. you know, things settled. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm pretty good at monopolizing people's time. But um, <laughs> they, they again, there were no conditions attached to it. It wasn't uh, sure you can talk to Doug, but you got to keep it happy talk. You know, we don't want to hear anything you know negative about the NRA. There was nothing like that. Right. Um, and, and I thought that was very good. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a new position for Doug Hamlin. He I. Made it pretty clear that uh, even, you know, two or three months ago, I don't think this was on his radar of being EVP. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the, 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 this, this was sort of kind of thrust on him and he thought, OK, uh, who else would it be? Um, and I think the answer was Charles Cotton. And I don't think that was acceptable to uh, uh, the reformers. So, you know, I would have loved to have been able to ask him some some questions that I don't think I would have gotten a good answer to, like what happens? to those staffers that uh, were part of, you know, the the old guard who are still around. Andrew Rulinundum, for example, is uh, back as public affairs director at NRA ILA, I believe. Um, is he? That is so, you know, he was the that. acting EVP. He was the uh, dire executive director of general operations named by Wayne. Um, I kind of thought that he would have been quietly or not so quietly, uh, you know, pushed aside after the reformers. But uh, apparently Andrew is around. Um, there are going to be some other folks who, you know, maybe we're working with the old guard who are still inside that building. Um, but at the same time, you've got folks like Joe DeBurgulis, who's been renamed, uh, head of general operations. The, uh, the HR director who, um, was rumored to be, I don't even know if rumored is the right word, but to, uh, alleged to be sort of a, uh, a flack for Bill Brewer, um, was replaced uh by hamlin in the past couple of weeks so although bill brewer there's still, still a lot of still there yeah and that's one of the other questions that i would have loved to have asked but i knew i wasn't going to get an answer hmm. because of the trial coming up and i thought yeah. that would have been an unfair to ask doug hamlin a question that i knew he couldn't answer um because of the legal considerations so hmm. i didn't ask about bill brewer but that's obviously sure. one of the questions i think nra members have hmm. you know there are the the nra's Biggest expense, I, I think, and you would know better than me, are legal fees these yeah. days. The largest and the single bulk line of that money is yeah. going towards Bill Brewer, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah, it's, the, it's still the largest single line item, uh, and that's for the combined uh, NRA entity. The NRA is, you know, six different legal entities, or six or seven different legal entities, and, and yeah, it's and it's like fifty million a year, uh, so it's a lot of money. Yeah. And so I think that's a that, you know, that is one of the elephants in the room here is what happens after the trial. Um, you know, Doug Hamlin said he thinks the NRA has hit bottom. He did say and this might be the most important information that he would want out there. Um, he did say that in May they met their they actually exceeded their revenue goals for the month for the first time, he said, in several years. Hmm. Um, and it sounded like a lot of the memberships really kicked up between May 20th and May 31st, which is when the board meeting was held. Hmm. So that's actually a pretty good sign. If you want to, you know, see, uh, uh, you know, some sort of sign that uh, NRA members are returning home, that would be it. Um, but I think the NRA still has a, a way to go. I think that there are a number of issues that still need to be addressed and hopefully will be able to be addressed in the months ahead.